And with me right now is Mr. Oli Damagard. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I've been quite exhausted, I must say, after this Trump uh, incident. I've been going non-stop, non-stop, uh, trying to find out what actually went down. So if you, if you if you if my cam was on, you would see smoke coming out of my ears. I think. Has it really been that bad for you? <laughs> not not bad, but interesting because this is such a multi-layered operation. So so uh, yeah, so it's been non-stop, non-stop. My goodness, yes. And, you know, when I first initially saw this, I thought no doubt this was a, a setup, an inside job of sorts. But you believe it goes even further than that. You believe this whole thing didn't actually go down. Let's begin in the right order. So one of the few heroes I have, his name is Fletcher Crouchy. He worked with Black Ops and it's in the Pentagon in the late 50s and early 60s. And uh, uh, was so, he was the guy that is uh, portrayed as Mr. X in the JFK movie and who's sent to the South Pole to to not be around when they they um, went live with this whole operation in Dallas. So after that, he became a whistleblower and he has taught me so much about these operations, how they're carried out, what is uh, what to look out for, the whole blueprint and setup and so on. So what I do is I... I listen and learn, like I said, a lot from him. So, so I follow his advice. And what he says is when something happens that you suspect could be something else than the, the, uh, like the official narrative, then look at what, not what happened so much, but what did not happen that should have happened normally. And uh, so when you, when you look at this incident, I mean, right away, just like you, I just felt, whoa, 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 something is very, very odd. And, you, you got the whole uh, official narrative where we're being told that this 20-year-old uh, with no military background, with no training, with no whatsoever, managed to bypass the Secret Service and the, all the different rings of security around that to get access to the building closest to the stage, like only, what is it, like 400 uh, feet or something like that, something ridiculous. and that the snipers didn't see him, that there was only like four snipers in total, that uh, the secret, so I mean, the whole thing, when you look at it, it's like, what? And then the secret service, the head of the chief secret service goes out and said, yeah, but we're very sorry, but because of the, the danger for our agents that the, the roof was sloping, we couldn't, they couldn't uh, access that building or they couldn't secure it. I mean, really, it's like a normal roof, it's a flat roof. and. Uh, also, normally, at this point, with all the interest in Trump uh, now before the election, I mean, Trump can fill a stadium almost like, and here we are out in the middle of absolute nowhere in a place called Butler in Pennsylvania, where like it got a population of 30,500. What is that? So right away, uh, also the, the sound of the shooting, very odd, did not sound like right, it sounded like something else. And so, when I, one of the things that I look out for are anomalies, things that doesn't match up, things that doesn't fit into the official narrative. The reason that I dig very deep in these things are not because of like really what happened, but what was the consequences of what happened, you know, problem, reaction, solution. What solution or what hero were we served after this that would then go into a possible much bigger plan? So. If this was an attempt on his life, that's one thing. If it was a staged event, it's another thing. If it was an inside job staged event, that's a completely different ball game. Right. And so depending on what happened, we had to look at completely different scenarios. And right now, with all the madness that's going on as well, I think it's very important to find out, yeah, who? Let's take a closer look. So one of the first things that I looked at was these incredibly iconic photos that was just like movie posters yeah. and uh, incredible blue sky and like the flag in the exact right position and the secret service agents that now we've been told that nope, they were not secret service and I've had from inside sources, they were actually coming from Homeland Security. But when you look at the way they act, the way they fumble around with their guns, the way that, uh, like, one of them is a, a little overweight, sorry, 
Right. Need, I mean, these these agents are yeah. highly trained, highly skilled, highly on top of everything. You know, what is that? They couldn't even holster their guns. They didn't act the way Secret Service uh, should do normally. They did not have an iron ring, like multiple security rings around the place. Normally, Secret Service comes out maybe weeks ahead, you know, to secure the whole area. And now in this area, we're talking a flat area, making it difficult, you know, because then it's an open target practice almost. And they have to count in 360 degrees. The, the attack, if an attack is coming, it can come from any direction. So this is a really tricky, tricky place to, to protect because you've got like a possible sniper 1.6 miles away now oh, right. with the weapons you have. You know, so it's like, why on earth did they choose that? Why did they, you know, like choose a place where he's standing right out in the open? And also once they got him down on the floor, then when they brought him back up, he, they left his head, open, you know, like visible multiple times, perfect for a second possible shooter, you know, because you never know. So the way the so-called Secret Service Act is absolutely not true. Uh, I mean, it's very obvious that they are not highly trained uh, Secret Service agents. So, so who are they? You right. have to ask yourself, so what on earth were they there? Then also... If you look at the way Secret Service works in uh, co collaboration with the local police and, and all of these things, you'd have like multiple layers of security and every single building, every single angle, everything would be covered and protected and all doors uh, locked and secured and windows locked and secured and all of them. What do we see here? Absolute zero. We see four, four snipers up on a rooftop. They're not even hiding. They're way up in the open. On the on uh, the vest of the guy that is said to have shot uh, and killed this uh, this young guy, uh, it says police. It doesn't say Secret Service. At least now they say, no, it does. If you zoom in very close to the ones, the photos I got, it only says police. And also the Secret Service went out and said, right, after a few days, we don't have a Secret Service sniper with that name, because he went out publicly and said, I was told to stand down. I saw the shooter. I, I asked, can I take him out? No, wait, 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 wait. Right. And then the shooting started. What is that? You know? And yeah, there, was, there was a lot of, uh, of strange anomalies. Uh, yeah, exactly. So the thing is, was there one shooter? Was there two shooters? Were there three shooters? Were there none? No shooters at all. So we look at the photos and uh, like, for instance, there's, there's this iconic photo that was posted on the New York uh, Times uh, cover and all of these, where you see uh, they've taken down the stairs, yeah. crystal blue sky, the flag in the background, incredible. What a shot. What do you, what uh, Oli, what if I threw this at you, plain devil's advocate, what if I just said, you know, there is all kinds of photographers all over the place and getting a photo like that would you know, be kind of probable, the fact that there's so many of them all for over sure, the event. For sure, Michael. But do you think it was a little hear too me? perfect? Could you please hear me out first? Yes, sir. If you if you see the video footage with, that we've been shown of the shooting, take out the sky. It is dark gray. It is not blue at all. Take out the sky of the witnesses that were being uh, interviewed. We're being told very soon after the shooting, there were several witnesses that were being interviewed. Check out the sky completely clouded. It's not like the same as when the shooting happened. And then you have this crystal, crystal blue sky. Uh, In the photo. That is taken. Yeah. Yeah. So how, explain that one, please, because how did that sky change so drastically within a few seconds? It could not. And so uh, you also have the flag behind it. That flag is not there. Because the flag is a special flag that is with two uh, big cranes and it's held up uh, way up on a wire, way, way up above the stage. But if you look at the angles from where this photo was taken, right. you cannot get the flag in behind that. Then you look at the setup of that shooting. It's a, more or less a copycat of this iconic Iwo Jima photo, you know, at the end of the Second World War, yeah. when you have the American soldiers that are pushing out the flag like that. That is also a stage photo, by the way, because it happened the day before with no photographer. 
So the photographer took the soldiers, went back up on the top of the hill of Iwo Jima, and they redid the whole thing. So that one was a stage photo also. Then you have, uh, there's this photo that has caught the bullet midair. That is impressive. It that is, is, yeah. Because to do a thing like that, you need a shutter speed of like between at least 10,000 frames per second, often up to more like 50,000 frames per second. That is like a slow motion camera where uh, to do slow motion footage, that's when you can catch a bullet like that. With a normal camera, absolutely not. You cannot, you can not, not even in slow motion, you cannot. So how did that, how is that even possible? You look at the angle of that photo, uh, the photographer, if you look at him, he's from below and upwards, but the photo is taken more or less straight from the front, it looks like. And so you look at the photographer, who is this photographer that took this impossible shot? His name is Doug Mills. He just happens to be Donald Trump's absolute favorite uh, photographer. It's been on the news before that oh, he's really? the only one Trump uh, um, trusts. And also, he's been given a, he's a prize award winning photographer. Mm. He's also, I, I kid you not, yeah. do, you know, do you remember when George Bush Jr. was sat in this school class in Florida? I do. When, uh, his advisor came and whispered in his eyes. That's right. Are you telling me he took that photo? He took that Holy photo. shit. He took that exact photo. That wow. is the photo of a psyop if I've ever seen one. Uh, yeah, and that's one thing Ole I always bring up, and I, I don't really hear anyone else even mention that, but that whole thing almost seemed too picture perfect, in my opinion. They are incredibly good. They are... Oh, good. But let's just carry on. Yes. So anyway, so we're being told that this 20-year-old somehow got explosive, got a gun, got all of these things, you know, parked the car. The way that he bypassed the, the Secret Service was right. that he parked like a few hundred yards further away and then walked in. Really? But he was stopped. He was stopped. And what they found on him was equipment where you measure the distance for rifle shooting. <clears throat> And they saw, no, it doesn't really matter. Just let him pass. How did the rifle get in there? Anyway, so so they say that they they let him through in there. Then suddenly this ladder appears out of nowhere because he didn't bring it. Maybe he brought it there a few days before, and unfortunately the Secret Service didn't notice this massive big ladder. But he went up there on the roof in the same building. They now say that the police were, we're in. Yeah. The, <laughs> okay, so the police even came up behind him, That's saw right. him with the rifle, said, oh God, I don't, I wonder what's going on here, then went down again. No shooting occurred, no nothing. Like that. So this guy then, because they say now he was under a lot of stress, you know, so right. he managed to fire. And some people speculate, did he, man, did he uh, practice to miss, was, his, uh, was the aim to miss his head and just get his ear? No one can make a shot like that on a moving target. That's right. They, they, so anyway, so we're being told that the bullet was fired and it just hit uh, the top end of uh, Donald Trump's right ear. A normal shot like that, ask any, any weapon expert with some kind of knowledge around these type of things. They would say that a bullet passing so close to your ear will make you deaf, more or less. It would the the uh, what do you call the, the air pressure around the bullet will make an impact on your, your skin and flesh. And, you know, so, sometimes people don't even have to be hit by a bullet to be knocked over anyway because of the impact from, from the air pressure. And here we're told it went through his ear. His doctor said a two centimeter, two centimeter, that is like bigger than the tip of your nose, like double the tip of your nose, a two centimeter hole through his ear. And then he said a lot of swelling. Afterwards, what do we see? Absolutely no swelling. He hears perfectly. There's nothing like that. And and also when you look at the diagram, they said had had Donald Trump not moved his head, the bullet would have hit him right in the uh, center, right behind the right ear in the temple area, and then out the back of his head. Do you know any other American president president who was killed with an exactly a shot like that? The exact angle from behind the picket fence, boom, and out the back. It is 
exactly the way that Kennedy was shot, the final headshot. But we're being told, because please understand, in these operations, if it is a like a, a PSYOP, there would be multiple layers of subliminal messages and subliminal things that will sort of um, remind you of other historical events and get the patriotic thing up and, oh my God, oh my God, something needs to be done, that whole thing. So they pump these things with all kinds of things, uh, messages and subliminal stuff like that. So anyway, so thank God Donald Trump moved his head. He said, look at the screen up to the right. So he moved his head. He also moved it so that we cannot see what happened on the right side of his, of his uh, head. But of course, the audience behind him could see that. So how, how is that possible to do anything in front of the audience? But there is a company called Crowd, Crowd On Demand, where you can rent crowds. Crowdsondemand.com, go to their website. You can rent crowds. You can, what do you need? Do you need a rally? Do you need pro-abortion, anti-abortion, pro-Hillary? Do you want to be like, a, look like you're a famous rock star? Do you want paparazzi photographers? What do you want? We can send 400 people. We can send 1,000 people. We can make a massive crowd, you know, all of them signing NDA so that no non-disclosure agreement, which will put them under a lot of, you know, they can be sued from here to the moon. But also, if they break the silence, it can go very bad. We, we've seen this company appear in many, many different areas, like the Charlottesville right. car attack and many other places. But officially, these are just crowds. These are just, so that would be an explanation, at least for the crowd behind the, the president, because on the sides where they could not really see what was going on, it's possible that at least some of these people were real people that were not sort of like, uh, rented in if i'm correct if i'm correct so anyway so we we uh, the bullet hits his hits his uh, ear he puts up his right hand uh, to the rear ear and disappears behind the podium and the secret service who knows absolutely not what they're doing just comes running and jump on top and then you got like two soldiers or military uh, equipped people no adrenaline, nothing. I mean, the way they behave, they run off with their rifle, moving around like, yeah, blah, blah. You, that is not the way these things are carried out in real life. If you want to see how Secret Service uh, works when it's for real, look at the, uh, the failed attack on Reagan. That's how they do it. That is, they're doing everything they could to stop it, but they, it was just the, uh, not possible. That was, by the way, an attack by George Bush Sr. Uh, carried out through different areas. Doesn't matter. Let's go back to them. Anyway, oh, we're, we're being told afterwards, he says in the speech afterwards that uh, he hear this bullet that passes here and he's like, oh my God, it can only have been a bullet. And then he puts up his hand and he said when he looks on his hand, it's covered in blood, covered in blood. So we go frame by frame by frame. We see when he puts his hand up there, then when he, his hand leaves his ear, no blood, no blood, no blood, no blood. When they take him off stage, no blood on his right hand. Yeah. There's several photos when the hand is open. I'm glad so, you, you said know. that, though, oh, um, Oli. You know, that, that's one thing that I haven't exactly dismissed or found any proper reasoning for the fact that, you know, he got shot in the ear and he's saying it was covered with blood. But when you go back, his hand wasn't even covered in blood, by the way. And if you were shot in the ear, I, I would imagine you would bleed a lot more than he did. In Denmark, at least when I was born there, they used to take, uh, if you wanted to take a blood sample, they took it in the tip of the ear because the blood is so easily accessible that it bleeds so easily and with no pain that uh, you know in other countries they, they they do these tests in the fingertips which i don't get because that's where all the, the nerves are the fibers, you know so but the ear is an extremely bleeding uh organ i call it an organ right so also when you look at the blood itself the the amount of blood that is on his ear when he comes up from behind the podium that blood should just be pouring down his face, pouring down his face. It doesn't change shape or form yeah. all the way until he gets into the car. How is that possible? Then you have this very, very odd, like a D-shaped type of uh, blood stain on his cheek. Yeah, uh, It goes from his mouth and upwards 
And when you look at it, when you really zoom in on it, it looks like the blood should have started in the mouth and then running back, like if he had been lying on the, his back and he had had sort of like a cut or something to the lip. But here, this also does not move at all. And it makes no, no sense whatsoever compared to the wound in, in the ear. But when you look at the shape, which is very, very odd, it is the same shape as, for one thing, the, the NASA logo. I mean, that is far out there, so forget about that. I'll just point it out now. But it also, you know, there's a uh, plans going on for greater Israel. And the two rivers, the Tigris and the Euphrates, I don't know what that's in English, is exactly like this pattern, uh, like that. It's also the from a snake mouth, you know, the, which is also the symbol of lies. I don't know. I'm just pointing things out I hear you. because it's a, it's a very, very odd thing there. It's a then very complicated have, case. Then you have uh, the shoes. You remember, have we, I'm sure we've been talking about the shoes, have we not? I believe so, yes. And no, you don't believe so. Either you know or you don't because like the shoes are key in these operations. The shoe is a, a global mind control fear trigger. They lead shoes every single time in the thousands of these operations, alleged mass shootings, alleged uh, false flag attacks, uh, alleged terror attacks. They leave shoes there as a secondary fear trigger. Oh, it, they leave shoes. Over... I'm, I'm mis I misheard yeah. you. I'm sorry. They leave shoes. The shoes, I'm, I'm quite famous for the shoes <laughs> because... Okay, so uh, at least since the Second World War with the alleged Holocaust, we have been told uh, and that like millions of people have died. What is the proof? What is one of the main proofs is a pile of shoes. Yes, the pile of the shoes. shoes. Right. So we've been told, look at these shoes. That shows you that one million people died here or whatever. When you look from a forensic point of view, the only thing it proves is that somebody has put a pile of shoes over there. It, that's what it proves. It proves nothing else. But we have been connecting these shoes with death on a subliminal level for decades. So my my late friend uh, Cody Snodgrass, who was a black op for, for more than 20 years, <clears throat> I did many, many interviews because I kept finding all of these shoes on crime sites. If you want to have an example, check out Google Images, and then you go and you check out Dayton, Ohio, mass shooting. Dayton. Ohio mass shooting. There's like a parking lot with it's uh, cordoned off by police tape, and then you got like I think it's 29 pair of shoes just in a pile, uh, new shoes. They're just lying there in a big pile, and we're being told there was a mass shooting here. That's just one out of a thousand examples. I've done so many shows. You, I just looked at it right now, by the way. Yes, I'm seeing a pile of shoes. So please, please, can you explain to me? What happened there? We're told that lots of people died there. So how, how were they shot and vaporized? Were they shot and fell out of their shoes? Were they were they shot and uh... you tell me what is that photo? That is a typical. <laughs> it's a weird typical. photo. Yeah, but we don't even see it because we're so yeah. used to shoes being connected to death. So you have the Las Vegas mass shooting, for instance. What was the symbol? What was the one, the photo that was spread everywhere? It was a pair of American uh, cowboy boots with the American flag on it and then blood, blood next to it. You have um, the, the photo the New York Times had about the Las Vegas shooting. It was the worst mass shooting in, in US history. Right. Front page, what was the front page photo? One shoe and a pool of blood next to it. Oh my. But you had that in the thousands, I'm telling you. If you go to my website. I see it now, by the way. I, yeah, I'm seeing those cowboy boots with the American flag. Yeah, and you had exactly that as well with Donald here because we had one Secret Service agent who, I mean, the crowd is completely calm. You see the photographer taking a photo, and he, this Secret Service guy, has thrown himself on top of three people. If you look at the people in the audience, they're just sitting there playing with that belly button. You know, there's no panic, there's yeah. no nothing. This agent is on top of three people. Why? Why? But the photo is taken, and look at the boots. 
of the woman that he is on top of. Oh my God. It's a pair, it's a pair of cowboy boots with the American flag. By the way, I just looked for the Donald Trump, um, the shoe that was left behind and photographed, of course, it, and it's there. It's there. So you're but onto something here. Not onto something. I've done hundreds of interviews yeah. about these shoes where the shoe is wow. key. You, also, if you go to uh, an incredible movie called Wag the Dog, Wag the dog. Oh, I've seen that. Yeah, with with Donald, uh, with um, Robert De Niro and uh, Dustin Hoffman. It is an incredible movie where yeah. they're showing us how they do it. And in that movie, the shoe is very central because, uh, for one thing, they in the whole thing they need to find a hero. Right. I, I really recommend you watch this movie again. They need to find a hero. So they are looking for someone and they say it has to be somebody. You have to find someone with a name that has something to do with a shoe. So his name was, I think, Schumacher or something like that. It's Woody Nelson, uh, Woody Harrelson that they bring in. Uh, and and he's sort of a mad uh, war hero that they bring in. Also, you got Willie Nelson. They want to for him to, to make up a song that can really add to the whole national patriotic growth. Thing for this incredible psyop that this whole movie is about to divert the attention away from a presidential scandal. And the song he makes up is The Old Shoe, and they make it sound like it's an old, uh, you know, like old uh, 78, uh, whatever they were called, these old uh, records. And also, they throw up the shoes over the, the telephone lines and all of these things to get a whole movement going. The shoe, the shoe, the shoe. And it was like, uh, Cody Snodgrass, uh, my black uh, op, uh, friend, he said that as far as he understood that when we are put like in a trauma, which we've been doing, we are being traumatized on almost a d daily basis nowadays with all of these alleged attacks and shootings and my God, it's like the world is horrible, 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 horrible. What they've done for more than 60, 70 years is we, we're being told something horrible has happened. And so there's blood and devastation or blown up things in the background, and then a shoe, da -da 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 -da, and then a shoe, da -da -da -da, and then a shoe. So I spoke to a psychologist, and he said that when, when we see something that reminds us our own death, we want to see it. We're sort of fascinated with it. At the same time, it's like we try to hide or cover ourselves from it. So we, we look at it, and oh my God, he's missing a head. And then our eyes are moving away and are looking for something familiar to rest on. And that's where the shoe is. So this shoe becomes like a secondary trigger of trauma when it's repeated over and over and over again. That's how they, they work with MK Ultra as well, where you have, uh, when they're preparing people for MK Ultra operations, they put them through extreme traumatic events like gang rape and torture and whatever. And in the meantime, because they need a trigger to activate this secondary personality that is created through this traumatic event, it's, it's quite complicated, but they need a trigger to switch from one personality to the other, because that, the secondary personality, that's the one they can then control and get to do horrible stuff. So when they put people through this traumatic thing, they can sort of maybe play the same Mary had a little lamb in the background or it's a symbol or a color or a specific you know, wording or something like that. That would be the trigger because in the end, after having traumatized these poor people over and over again, in the end, you only need the trigger boom, to get the, the uh, trauma going and then switch to the secondary personality. So here, Cody Snodgrass, former Black Ops and somebody who's been down this road for so many years, he said that he believed that the shoe that is left everywhere like that is like a global low budget fear trigger so that we see, oh my God, and then the shoe, and then the shoe. So it just adds to the whole thing. So the shoe has been like incredibly important for them for, for decades, decades. And so when Trump said he's just been shot almost in the head and they're gonna carry him off stage, what does he say? Get me my shoes, get me my shoes, get me my shoes. That was the only thing he was worried about, get me, was it, what he was doing was shoes, 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 pointing at us, sort of bump, bump, adding to, to the whole traumatic thing. And then, by the way, 
within I think within 24 hours he had a, a sneaker of his own. He has these uh, Trump sneakers or whatever they're oh, called. Yeah. Golden sneakers. But this this the shoe with a limited number. Now, I think he will he will earn some 1.5 million or something like that when they're sold if they're not sold already. Number wow. series of him with the fist up there from this one of these iconic photos, incredibly, and then with the words fight, fight, fight. They were already there, more or less, when he got shot. How did that happen if it wasn't prepared? And by the way, fight, fight, fight. F is the sixth letter in the in the alphabet. Six, six, six. This is how they do it very well. Then also what they do is they, they want multinational involvement when they go emotional with these types of situations. So right. very often, if there's an alleged mass shooter or terror attack, the attacker will, or if it's a terror attack, uh, it, he will have like a double citizenship, like uh, German, Afghani, or French, Tunisian. Or, and then the victims, if there's, let's say there's 11 victims, there will be like six nationalities. And the reason for that is to involve emotionally as many countries as possible, because we mostly just care for ourselves. <laughs> you know, like if uh, if 13 people from Sudan was murdered, people in Sweden was like, okay, yeah. But if a Swede, oh my God. Right, right. Or a, so the names, if you look at the names of very often also the alleged victims of these, <coughs> sorry. No worries. Of these, uh, the victims when you put their names if you go through uh different um i forgot the name of it you you get it, the name in and you get out the number the number is more or less always 33 and also this guy was named corey uh, uh what was his name but it's cc which is the third letter of the alphabet which is 33 there as well <laughs> and also he was a firefighter the firefighter if you look Oh yes, the, the guy Oklahoma who got killed. City bombing, mm -hmm. The Oklahoma City bombing, who was the hero, the, the iconic photo there, the firefighter with the baby. Right. You had the firefighters in 9-11. You had the iconic photo from 9-11 with the firefighters and the American flag, very similar to the one from Iwo Jima. Uh, as far as I know, also taken by Doc Stills, the same photographer. And but mm -hmm. so the name of the other two victims, there were two, there was one dead and two wounded, they say. One was David Dutch. That sounds pretty Dutch to me. And then the other guy was, uh, was his name Daniel, first name, something like that, very blurry image. And then Copenhaver. Do you, you see Copenhaver is very close to Copenhagen, isn't it? Very, yeah. And then also, yeah, David have, Dutch. Sorry right. if I go for it. Oh, I was going to say, yeah, that was David Dutch. He's He got discharged, by the way. Yeah, David Dutch. And then. Yeah. Uh, James and Copenhaver. Also, he just happened to be mm -hmm. James Copenhaver. There yeah. you go. Right. So, but if you look, if you look, if you look at this as a possible psyop with multiple nationalities involvement to get the emotions going, uh, then these two last names are quite interesting. And That's true. The Dutch also. He was dressed in the American flag, and the post was just the American flag. And the background on the photo that we're being shown, he's standing in front of what looks like a container that is also painted in the American flag colors. Absolutely. And you have one witness that said that he was sat next to this fireman that was killed. And he said, <clears throat> so this the firefighter was uh, shot and, uh, and killed. And he said, and then next to him was another woman who was shot in the hand another woman who was shot in the hand there's no women involved at all the very odd and who where she would never heard of a woman that was wounded but this this the witness that's what he says then it just very goes odd. on and on and on but one thing i tell you is that uh, in 1995 there was a card game called the illuminati card game oh yeah that was printed printed very 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 odd card game in Things that has happened then, like 9-11, the Pentagon attacks, the so many, so, so many, including yeah. the Las Vegas attack, so many of these have been on these cards. And the cards is about world domination. It is for the ultra-rich. This game is made for the ultra-rich. And for them to play these cards, they have to put down what's called MB, which is a mega box. So in this card of decks, 
there is a photo, a, a card that we have, I mean, I've had this card game for 20 years or whatever, but there's this card that is very, like a very demonic version of Donald Trump, printed in 1995. Oh, yeah. And in it, you have this, the, his face, the black face, and there's a line that goes straight across his face to where his right ear is mm. and where the ear is, uh, when we are now being told that Donald Trump's ear was penetrated, right. there is a, a triangle, like a pyramid shape. And then it says, um, it's a sniper card. And it says, our snipers can get you anytime, anywhere, something like that. And then the, the name of the, the card is enough is enough. So who have been saying, who has been saying enough is enough lately quite a lot? We have Donald Trump. Enough is enough. He's been repeating it over for the last few months here. How or how or how is that possible? That's pretty wild. And I, I know that card game that you speak of, it's pretty wild. Yes, a lot of things that have been depicted on there have unfolded right before our very own eyes. Uh, but yes, this guy Thomas Matthew Crooks, the name of the shooter. A little bit staged. It's like that guy, Thomas Matthew Crooks, absolute patsy i guarantee you that i mean what you're looking at is part of the operation right that's what i'm believing part of the operation is to move your attention away from donald trump having set this whole thing up you have why it was done who donald trump is that is another question and i'm not really the right person to answer that i'm just looking at this uh, this specific incident I'm but yeah. I'm wondering when, who he works you, for, in my when, opinion. When you, sorry, say it, please. I, I was just saying, I wonder who he works for. Yes, you have to ask yourself that one because uh, it's the the same old story. Who benefits problem, reaction, solution? Who benefits? Oh, follow the money. Follow the power. <laughs> so, so anyway, so the way these things are set up is that you you set up what seems to be a real event. It goes boom, 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 and as soon as it's live, the main thing is what gets out in the media. It's the media outlets that is the, the most important. So it's not important what happened in Butler, Pennsylvania, for the people there. They don't care about them at all because if they can control the media outlet, they can also shut people up there. Or whatever. Right. So it the thing is what gets out the message that is being spread and that is what where we get all of these iconic photos we get the, this heroic uh, thing from donald trump we get the, the fight fight got, fight thing now yeah you got all of these uh, people that oh i used to doubt donald trump but now when i see how you react on the incoming fire that shows the real character of a person when you've been shot at yeah but what if he wasn't shot at at all that's true that's what i'm saying so I mean, I think you can see also now he played golf without no bandage on his on its ear, where there should be like a two centimeter diameter hole straight through. He should be completely in shock. He should be half deaf. He should be, you know. Instead, he's kind of so so relaxed, and uh, the way he, yeah, you you see the whole aftermath. What where in what direction that's going? It's yeah. going straight for the next uh, president that is where it's heading and well initially as soon as it happened i i thought only oh, yeah this guy has it in the bag already because yeah he got shot on camera uh, people in america they they received that message loud and clear you know they as you said he's willing to take a bullet for america Th this is the guy do you hear he took a bullet for democracy Correct. he took the whole thing these are slogans that are built in but in when these operations are set up they're loaded with red herrings. I mean, false leads that would take you off track, off track. So as soon as the operation is activated, go, 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 official narrative, push that one. And then for the rest of us that are into these type of things, they put these false leads that would show in all different directions. So this That's um, right. Matthew, Thomas Matthew Crooks, there you go, the name again, Crooks, come on, guys. So... And Thomas Matthew is also the biblical um, things, possibly, that there's a connection. Also, you have all of these alleged uh, shooters, James O. Ray, Patsy, Lee Harvey Oswald, Patsy, this guy, Patsy. Three, they always got three names, uh, Mark David Chapman. I'm not really sure why, but it's like it gives more credibility. Now they say that, no, sorry, we, we, 
it was not that guy, it's another guy who looks completely different, who's up on stage with a completely bloody face. When you check out the blood, I've spoken to people that are experts on blood, the blood next to the body, blood, yes, the bloody over the face, don't know what that is. It looks like paint from a barn or something like that. Very, very odd photo. Very odd. And let me ask you this really quickly, Oli. Do you think Trump will become the, the next president or do you think Kamala Harris will be the anointed one? And that's who the feds will go with, regardless if uh, Trump gets um, anything going. I don't know. I, this The bigger game, I'm not sure about. Because these things are played on such a multi-level, um, but it's heading straight there. They, they've gone emotional for the people who did not support Trump. Suddenly right. he's got a massive following of people before that was sort of like maybe... Oh, we yeah, they were on the fence. At the, yeah. at the moment, they've been really pumping out like problem, problem reaction, solution. Right. Biden, Biden can't even walk, he's falling over, right. he's uh, wearing diapers, he's, uh, you know, dement. well, he's got Alzheimer's, you name it. That's a problem to get people into like, oh my God, what are we going to do? How can we let this uh, guy who with no brain activated whatsoever, how can we let him leave the country? That's the reaction. And boom, suddenly you have, when people didn't know really which way are we going to go, boom, in came the, comes this hero, John Wayne, yay, baby in the fight, 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 uh, <laughs> yes. and suddenly you have the hero and leading straight to the White House. So whoever is controlling the White House, is that in the US or is it abroad? You have to look at what's going on in where we're being told about Israel. If you look at, most people think that you got the US on top and then Israel below, when actually when you look at the power structure, it seems a lot like it's the other way around. That's right. But that's, that's right. not the ultimate power either. That's not the ultimate power either. We're looking at like a stage being set up here. But I, I just want to say, because I need to go soon here, but all of these things with one shooter, two shooters, people on the water tower, um, was it uh, Thomas Matthew Crooks? Was it this other guy? That's right. That now they're tracking down old Crooks. He was like, he had uh, FBI, FBI connections. Yeah, and also he had connections with a, billionaire that was connected to this foundation and that foundation, all of that is a waste of time. Right. They're pushing us away. Yeah, but I did a sound analysis of the shooters with this, this, and that shoot. There was not shot, no shot fired. He was not shot. He was not shot. Look at his ear. Look at his hand. Look at the way he's behaving. Look at the whole setup. The shot were not fired the way we we're being told. He was not wounded the way we we're being told. So were there people there shooting? Yes, very possible, but blanks, whatever, to, to make the, whoever were there believe that a shooting was going on. He was pulled down behind the podium right away. We, all of the people in the stage, in the whole, um, behind the stage is a crowd controlled. I can guarantee you that. Uh, so whatever went on down there below before he came up with the blood in the face and the ear, this whole thing, uh, that is where it happened. Goodness. This whole other thing about listening, how many shooters, it's part of the operation. This is how they do it. So that now there will be all of these stories about Thomas Crooks there, and then maybe he went to Jamaica and he had the, like secret bank accounts and millions were transferred. He was 20 odd years. You know, also he was, I just want to mention, he was in this Black Op, uh, no, sorry, Black Rock. Uh, commercial, right. And if you look at that, uh, you have, in, he's the only guy that is there two times in this commercial about for teachers. But look at the whiteboard behind the teacher when he, he's talking there about different uh, things. It says Unit 3 on the whiteboard, Unit 3. Now, Unit 3, if you look at the building where we're being told that Matthew, Thomas Matthew Crooks was located when he fired, if you look from above there, it's a, it's an, uh, recycling uh, glass company, and there's like nine entrances on that building, but the building itself from the bump, if you look from the bump, it looks exactly like a three. And I can only say this is the way they leave these clues in our face because of the law of karma. We've been talking about that many times before, that they, they're really scared of the law of karma. So what they believe is that 
they, if they show us what actually happened, even if it's in many subtle and, and tricky ways to find, the way they re the reason is that if we did not react, then indirectly we consented, and then the bad time is on our show. My goodness, yes, a lot to consume here, and we'll definitely go back and uh, see all the moving parts, and more information will come out, and most people can decipher what's uh, real and what isn't, and there seems to be a lot of things that uh, make you question the quote-unquote official narrative, and once again, Oli, um, I, I do want to thank you tremendously for being a part of the program yet again, and that's lightonconspiracies.com, that's where you could find Oli, and uh, Oli, do you have any... Uh, potential sort of appearances or anything of that nature coming up. I I just did a live webinar. Oh, okay. Uh, which was, it just exploded. I mean, it was completely overloaded. If you go to my website, like you said, lightonconspiracies.com, there's the recording of this webinar. In that webinar, I have an extremely detailed PowerPoint presentation where I show you step by step by step by step exactly. Uh, what it is I'm talking about, and I tell you, you will be gobsmacked because it's one thing to speculate, it's another thing when you see it for yourself. So, please, uh, it's on donation, just uh, sign up there, check out the, the recording. I've, I've done my absolute utmost to, to be as detailed as possible. And Very nice, because this is this one is really important. You can do the other side when many others, but this is top of the line when it comes to these type of operations. If it is a time, I tell you, if it's if the official narrative is, is correct, you are welcome to chop off my right arm and serve it as a mistake or whatever. It is uh, in my world. I've been down this road for more than 40 years. This is a 100% inside job with Donald Trump, whoever he is, completely in the know, completely in the setup as well, okay. which is very confusing for the rest of us. Absolutely. My goodness. Well, once again, Oli, thank you so much for being a part of the program. I will talk to you on the other side, my friend. Looking forward to it.